Okay, so now we've made our part body uh, that we're going to use for our finite element analysis and ultimately then the optimization. What we're going to do here is we're first going to apply a material to this part body um, that will ultimately get imported into the analysis case. You can always change this later, uh, but what we want to do is use apply material at the bottom of the toolbar here and click on that it'll bring up a whole series of materials and we're going to click on other and then I'm going to use plastic and you'll notice this is grayed out uh, what you want to do is select part body hit apply material and hit OK now depending on your visualization mode um, it may change color that's because it's now uh, I, I have it in a material mode um, actually I have it in a custom mode I'll show you that real quick if you go to customize view parameters at the bottom it's a question mark uh, so I have on material but I also have on I show edges so it's kind of this product design looking visualization mode um, if you don't show the edges it, it's a little harder to see on screen so I make sure I have edges on and material on and hit OK now if I double click on the plastic material it'll bring up its properties um, if you go to rendering, this is simply just the colors of the material. You know, you can change this to whatever you want. If it, I don't know what color you're going to be 3D printing in, it doesn't really matter. That doesn't change the actual physical properties. But if you go to analysis, that's what information is going to ultimately be used in the finite element modeler uh, to predict the structural behavior of this piece. So this information I'm going to leave it as the default plastic for now but ultimately you're going to want to get the information for PLA which is the type of plastic that we're going to be 3D printing from. Go ahead and hit OK and then we're going to go and um, save this file and now we're going to create the analysis for this. Basically what's going to happen is this is going to go into an analysis file. So go to Start, Analysis and Simulation, Generative Structural Analysis. And we're going to do a static analysis and hit OK. And what you'll notice up in the tree here is this Analysis Manager. And below that is Links Manager. And this link is it connects to your part file. It's also created a series of things by default for us. Uh, one is the mesh that's going to define the that's going to use for the finite element modeling. Um, a 3D property it's automatically applied to the part because this is a solid part. It assumes that you want to do a 3D analysis. You can also do uh, 2D and one-dimensional elements, i.e., surfaces and then lines. Um, which is probably something that's used, you know, a little more in in uh, building structural engineering. In this case, we're doing solid analysis on this part. It's already imported the material, and then we have to apply all the case information for this: restraints, loads, etc. So, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is apply the restraints. And to do that, we're going to go to our restraints toolbar. I'm going to be using clamp. Um, there's other types of restraints, sliders and, and ball joints, etc. Um, you can also set a custom one that would be, uh, you know, you can specify the degrees of freedom. For clamp, we're just um, restricting all six degrees of freedom. So I'm going to click on clamp and then I'm going to click on the inside of that hole. Now make sure when you click on it, it says one face here and that it's kind of highlighted the, the interior of that hole. We're going to do both of the support holes at once. I'm going to zoom in. Again, click on that hole, and it should now say two faces here. If you've accidentally clicked on an edge or something, um, just cancel this and redo it. I'm going to hit OK. So we now have our restraints. They show up in the tree. And if I click on clamp, you'll see it's highlighted how those items are restrained. So now I'm going to apply the loads. In this case, we're going to be using a distributed force 
on this hole here. Um, there's a whole bunch of other options to choose from. Let's go with a distributed force. The support we're going to click on, again, this interior hole here. And so we're going to apply it to that one face. And I want to have this go in the Z direction. I'm going to do negative 1,000 newtons. Okay. And you'll see it sums it up for you automatically. And you can just barely see the arrows on the inside of that hole going in the down direction, negative Z direction. I'm going to hit OK. Now, ultimately, we want this thing to be able to resist a little bit of lateral in the X direction as well. Um, in our test case, we're looking mostly at the vertical, but somehow that test case probably won't be 100% perfect. So we want to make sure it resists a little bit of lateral force. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put a bit of lateral force on this face here. So using the same force, we're going to select this is the support. Zoom in there. And then we don't want any in the zero for this one. What I want to do is I'm going to put it in the X. I'm going to say negative 40 newtons. So now we're pushing on that face a bit. And I'm going to hit OK. So it's a very small bit of load, but we just want to make sure that th this thing doesn't get too thin when we optimize it, and then it sways side to side here. Okay, so now we have our forces. One thing I want to do is I want to tweak this mesh a bit. I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to change the size to five, mil five millimeters. That's the approximate size of the mesh. I'm going to change the sag to one. The sag kind of handles how the mesh is on the details to make sure that your mesh is never too far from your original design surface. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. And it doesn't update the mesh. You can't even see the mesh yet until we, until we actually run it. Um, at this point, I'm going to hit Save, Control S. Um, I have this saved from a previous analysis, but I'm just going to overwrite this. OK, and I'm going to hit Save. I guess I want to overwrite it. Uh, you shouldn't have any file in there unless you've made one already. But, but so now it's saved that analysis, and this part is also in that same folder. Um, it just shows the link here, though. Um, okay, so we should be ready to run this. Let's see what happens. So let's go to Compute. It's like a little calculator. And we're going to say All. You can also just update the mesh or the analysis case. In this case, we're going to do all and hit OK. And it's going to run the mesh, and it's going to tell us how long it's actually going to take to run the analysis. If you do a very complicated model or a frequency case solution, something like that, it could take quite a bit of time. In this case, it's 0.2 seconds. It's a pretty, pretty small amount of time. That's good because then our optimization will run fast. Do we want to continue? Yes, we do. Okay, so now we've run that, and, well, I don't really see anything yet, right? Well, we have to add some visualizations to understand what's going on. The only thing that's updated, actually, is the, the default sensor, which is energy. Let's take a look at how we can visualize what exactly is going on in this particular solution. So, let's start by looking at deformation, okay? Now... I click on the deformation, you'll notice under our static case solution, it adds the deformed mesh into there. And what I can also do is at the bottom here, I can click on amplification magnitude and adjust the scaling factor. So this will show us how this thing is actually deforming. Okay. And we'll notice if we kind of look at it from the top, it's being pushed a little bit to one side due to our lateral force, etc. I'm going to hit OK. And what I want to do is I just want to make sure, I want to compare the two and see how this looks compared to the original. If I right click on Links, Links Manager and say Hide Show, so this is showing us where the deformed mesh, like what exactly it's doing. All right. Now, in this case, we've exaggerated, as I said. 
by a factor of 15. If we just put that down to approximately 1, this is more like reality of what the mesh is going to do. Okay. I'm going to leave it at amplified a little bit. And I'm going to go back and hide the original shape from Link's Magic. You can also look at stresses on the object um, using the von Mies stress. And actually, there's different visualizations for this that you can play around with. Um, you can double click this and see different options. Also, if you switch to your material mode, it'll show it'll show different contour lines and things. Um, you can we're not going to go into the details of all the other options. But if you switch to mesh mode down at the bottom here, or I'm sorry, shading with material rather, you'll see the colored mesh and where there's some stresses. You'll notice there's definitely some, some high stress at the corner. So we may want to add some fillets there later on um, to reduce that. Let's not worry about that for the moment. The reason being is because what we're really concerned is about this deformation. Um, while putting a fillet there will affect it, ultimately uh, those things will just take the model longer to update. This is kind of how you design a solution, basically. Um, there's lots of different options and ways to do this. So we could add all these other features to the solid model and let it mesh that each time, which would just take more time, versus run the optimization on a simpler model and then add more features and refine it later. So we can look at von Mises stress. And again, there's, there's a whole bunch of different analysis options that you can take a look at. Um, what we're actually concerned with is the displacement in this case, anyway, we're, we want to limit the deformation in how much this hole moves. Okay, I'm going to actually hide this um, Von Mies stress diagram, and I'm going to unhide this links manager. And what I want to do is I want to add a sensor here on this hole to see how much it's moved. If we go over to sensors, I can just right click on sensors and say create a local sensor. And we want to look at the displacement magnitude, hit OK. And you'll notice it has a little exclamation point. That's because we haven't really linked it to anything yet. I'm going to double click this. And now I want to link it to that hole to see how far it moves. So under supports, I'm going to click on that. And we want to do a couple things here. We want to create a parameter for it. Oh, we have to do this in order. I apologize. Post treatment, we actually want to do, we're going to look at the average movement of that hole. It's probably going to move pretty consistently together because there's going to be a, a bolt going through it. Um, so let's just look at the average and then do create parameters and hit OK. Now, what you'll notice is this thing's being weighted. Uh, it's it's waiting to update. It hasn't been updated yet because we have to rerun um, part of the analysis to, to see that. I'm going to right click on the update sensor. It's going to say it needs to update. Hit OK. And now you'll notice that this thing with this the way the part is set up right now is going to be uh, a one millimeter displacement. So now we have our model set up. We have the, the value that we're going to look at in our optimization um, that we're going to set up next, uh, and that'll be in the next video.